Hello everybody, my name is Bubbles S and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. Today we are finally, once again, playing as Greece. It's been a long time since we did the Hellenic Achievement Triple, isn't it? But yep, we're back in Greece, attempting to do the Achievement Bad Romance. Let's begin, shall we? Of course, the very first thing we must do is put the King under house arrest. We can't have any rigged elections here. Right, for research, obviously standard electronics and industry to start. Good to have free research slots though. For the civs, they're going to build more mills in Attica and the Peloponnese. For all 13 divisions that Greece has, we're going to change them all over to the infantry template and put them on the border with Turkey and exercise them continually. We need a lot of XP today. We're going to build convoys with our dockyards, put all future mills into guns for now. And, of course, don't forget about Greece's navy. For now, it is pretty useless, but... Don't worry, it'll be fine later. But for now, it can just be on strike us in the Aegean Sea and the Eastern Mediterranean Sea. Now it's time to devalue the Drachma. Put your Air Force assigned to the General and give it any of any of these that you like. And finally, it's time to go up to speed 5 and be in. Right, the Venicelis has run the election, and just before we allow the election to pass, I just want to note, we have 28% war support right now, and Demetrius doesn't actually give us any war support, nothing else does. And there, once we get Venicelis in power, we somehow have 18%. Don't know what I'm missing there. Anyway, Venicelis, just like last time, is a massive pain, because he tends to die. But we need him to die sometime around here. So, if he dies, just... Have a save ready and reloaded. Anyway, once we have done devalue the drachma, we'll do utilize our strengths. And there we go. Right now, we're beginning to utilize Greece's strength. We're going to create an intelligence agency, and of course, we're now going to do open foreign subsidized factories, so improve relations with Germany, Italy, Soviet Union, and France and Britain. I shouldn't have said Italy. They're incorrect for that one, but whatever. You could have done forced farmers into factories to slightly more recruitable population, but since fiscal responsibility and bedrock of financial stability, in my opinion, is rubbish, we're doing this. I mean, at the very least, exporting luxury commodities gives us free trade for nothing. There you go. Once you reach like 90 relations or so with the countries, obviously stop improving relations. And of course, you have just enough political power gain to not lose any political power, thanks to Venicius. That's pretty good. Right, we now have a positive amount of manpower, which is good, so what we're going to do, since we also have 6 XP, we're going to go into the division template, mobile, cavalry 1, and spam out 101 cavalry units. We're going to expand this to 144, but 101 is the maximum we can do for now. So deploy them here in the Pyrus, max priority, and put them out. There we go. Relations are good enough so that we can stop improving now, which is nice. It's a loss of political power anyway. Once your spy appears, uh, we'll hire this Patrick since he appears to be a real guy, unique portrait at least, and we're going to send him to Italy. Right, there's foreign subsidised factories, and now it's finally time to bring home the exiled Republicans. And now, so, since you have cavalry ready, start deploying them. What we're going to do is exercise them until they're at least level 2, but of course we're just going to keep spamming them out as well. Obviously having green units in battle is not the best idea. Anyone can say that to you. <laughs> well, here's the Spanish Civil War, and here's something specific for you. As you can see here, the CDA support is at 63%. What this means is that the Spanish will flip to fascist, which is very good. We need them to flip to fascist today. If their support is too low, you'll probably have to go down, go again. But keep in mind that martyrdom for Prima de Rivera gives 5% fascist support, so you might have some leeway there, but also keep in mind that Carlism gives them plus negative there, plus non-aligned support. So, Prisanduro is the leader for now, but eventually I'm expecting Prima de Rivera to show up. Once you have 250 political power, you're going to hire the Grand Battle Plan Expert. He's normally the only one that gives ticking XP. So even if we want to doctrine trains, we have to keep him, because that's the only way for us, annoyingly. And I am expecting to do a change of doctrine, because Greece does actually start on Grand Battle Plan. Of course, though, superior firepower is usually better. Right, the exiled Republicans are home, so now it's to a compromise with the Monarchists. And now that they're home, it's time for a change of command. This Nicolas here is a much better field marshal than Alexandrios, so we're going to prepare him to field marshal. 
there we go. We're going to give him aggressive assaulter, offensive doctrine, and charismatic. There we go. The sooner we do it, of course, the sooner he gets back up to not having the negative debuff of just being promoted. Right, now it's time for us to do our change of doctrine, so let's get superior firepower. It's annoyingly more better, in my opinion, than Grand Battle Plan. Well, you do eventually have things like Infiltration Assault. Ultimately, the soft attack is more useful right now. Of course, with the changes coming from No Step Back, that might change. Also, now that we've done Compromise with the Monarchies, we're going to go all the way down to Resurrecting the Megali idea, so remembering the Anatolian Catastrophe it is. And we also have 5 XP again, so go into your main infantry template and put on 1 Battalion of Artillery. There you go. And now this is important, as you can see here, Jose Antonio Prima de Rivera is now the leader of Nationalist Spain. Despite the fact I think he's dead at this point. At least executed, so... Whatever. But as you can see, Fascist Spain. That's very good. Obviously, if they were not aligned, they'd get guaranteed by the Allies, because we need to go to war with Spain at some point. But, if Prima de Rivera doesn't show up, just reload and go again. I should have said this sooner, but you should hire him attacks as soon as you have done compromise with the Monarchists. 10% more political power, 5% output is very powerful. Oh, and here begins the EEE. -E -E. Alright, now let's grab Athenian Thinkers, 5% research speed, very nice, very nice. And periodically you'll get EEE -E events, unlike doing the Megali idea properly, we will give into it. So, minus 15 political power, but 3% stability and 5% bash support today. At this point also, if Benesidios dies, it doesn't matter now, because you'll be flipping Fascist very soon, and if he does die and you have the event to lose limited conscription, it won't matter because it takes 120 days to pass. Once the main industry and electronics are pretty much done, you should start working on your weapons as well. Greece starts out very weak when it comes to guns. Right, there's Athenian thinkers, and now it's time for the Anatolian refugees, or negotiations with the EEE. Right, our negotiations, uh, right, our negotiations with the EEE are here, and we will enter a coalition with them. Gain space force support 10%, so we didn't have to ease up on conscription. And now it's time to hold the Herculeon Convention. Right, for the convention, unlike last time as well, you're going to invite all of the original Severus signatories. If you don't, you'll lose stability. Because you're in a fashion, uh, because you're in coalition with fascists, the convention is a complete failure. There we go. Unfortunate, but oh well. Now we're going to do for Vesham Warriors, and in a moment we'll be flipping ideology. There you go, the EE has launched a coup and we must answer for our failures. There you go, and there he is, Georgios. Probably one of the weirdest leaders in Hoi 4. This photo of him that they use is really bad if you can find it, it's very grainy, there's only like two photos of him that have ever been found. Anyway, now that he's here, we're going to hire the National Social Paramilitarist, we're going to go up to extensive prescription, we're going to befriend the communists, mostly so we can grab the armory group and expert, and we're also going to justify on Albania for Nova Pyrus, we have military access from Italy, and there you go. Yep, we're doing yet another order 66. It's all a bit weird, but whatever. It's probably the easiest way, it would say it's War of the Axis, usually. There you go for Beshan Warriors, as we still have a bit of time until War of Albania. What we're going to do is make a brief detour to export some more luxury commodities. You should probably work on upgrading your artillery as well, it's very useful in this game. Yeah, now that we're fascist and everything, we also unlock this general here. Uh, I'm not even going to bother pronouncing that, <laughs> I can't do it. He is probably the best general to choose against Turkey, so there you go. Alexandropolis is a mountain tile, so that means with him being a hill fighter, it means if we do it properly, he can become adaptable very soon. The main generals for the cavalry will be these two commandos, because out of supply is very nice. Right, there's more luxury quasis, free trade for nothing, and now it's time for horror and fear. So be ready to go by the time that's done. The war goal will be ready 10 days before we go to war with Turkey, but it won't matter. Just keep deploying your calves and the like. But if there's ever a time to do a save scum, now would probably be the time. Having your navy on strike force means Turkey won't navy invade you. So now let's do our order for against Turkey as well, now that I think of it. Grab all but one unit and put on a front line like this. 
So once Turkey starts bashing ahead against us, lose a lot of men, we'll go forward and circle them around to Dern and this port here and go away. Once we also have manpower, we'll train up more of these units. They're simple 8 ones with artillery, so they can fill out the front line. Right, we now have 137 units, which is pretty much enough to take down Italy. We need a few against Albania anyway, so break them in two, grab the other commando, and put the units on a order to defend Italy for no reason. Area defense, only for victory points, all the way up Italy's cause. The main ones and problems will be on like Rome and so. There they go. <laughs> right, there's our final cav. We'll send uh, three of them to Italy for now. You know what, I'm feeling so nice to them, I'm going to give them a very specific order, for no particular reason. Hmm, where should I send free useless cav? Eh, uh, we'll send them there, why not? And for the other four, put them on the Albanian border. Just means that Albania can't walk in on you. Since we're going to war with Italy, you could also get the achievement freedom or death like and what you're also going to do is join the axis there you go we're also going to hire ourselves an infantry expert and when we can the army regrouping expert shouldn't be too long 13 days for that there you go horror and fear make sure you do revive in the double-headed eagle turkey is smashing the head against your line which would be good this general will be able to get mountaineer don't call Germany in, of course. Germany might be a problem later, but we can deal with that later. As long as we wipe out most of Turkey's army, we'll be okay. Even if we do lose the Aegean Islands. As you can see here, it's one day until our justification is ready. I'm also noticing that this tile in Rome, near to Rome, is stacked for no reason, despite having all the units around. So we're going to send these six in to Rome. There you go. Just hold them so they stay. There you go, justification on Italy is ready. There we are on Albania, there you go. And just walk into Tirana. Activate force attack on your main generals. There you go. For Rome, you should probably try and get an encirclement on it. Use the other units around for that. And push them away. Try and link up and do all the things of Order 66. There goes Rome, that's good. Genoa's fallen too. Toronto is doing okay. Seems like sending units there was a good idea. There goes Venice. Right, Italy's almost done. And there goes Italy and Albania at the same moment. Perfect. <laughs> Right, what we're going to do is annex Albania, we're going to pocket Eritrea, Somalia and Ethiopia out of Italy. We're going to take Libya directly for ourselves. And after that we are going to puppet the Italians. There you go. Italy can also be a massive problem in many ways, so what you're going to do is grab any remaining units of theirs and put them on a fallback line. Just so they don't stack against Turkey unnecessarily. Get rid of all your horses, no longer need them. There you go. And start training up more of your infantry to fill out the front line on Turkey. Send your spy, whoever that may be, to Nationalist Spain. Now since we have befriended the communists, we are going to hire the army regrouping experts. Also start building in Italy. Italy, we need to annex them for their fleet at some point. To keep saving your political power mostly, spend it... Sparingly. There we go. Of now, it's just wait until Turkey has bled out. As you can see, Turkey's already lost 18,000. You should have probably have taken the Dodecanese directly, but oh well. That's something you can do in your game. It won't matter too much for us. The Dodecanese only has 100,000 manpower and has no factories within it. So you know, there's no loss to you, luckily. Now is also probably the time you should start changing around for production. You're going to need a lot of artillery and support equipment. So we're going to prepare for that. Yes, you don't have the steer right now. And um, while we could buy from Italy, that would limit how 
quickly we can get rid of them for the moment. So we'll just wait a little while. Your general will likely get Trickster and Infantry Leader along with Mountaineer, so you get all the grid traits today. <laughs> Right, there's Turkey. Just pass a few times and annex them. There you go. Perfect. No shenanigans needed for that. And now we can immediately revive Byzantium. There you go. Byzantine Empire. Right, let's organise this army just a tiny bit better. Mostly running on Italy's units right now, just so I don't have to focus on it. But we are trying to get more units up. Now, yes, we are still at war with Romania, but that's not a problem. What we are going to do, though, is... Hmm... Actually, we seem to have a bit of time on our hands, so... In defiance of what I usually would do, which would be invading Spain, I'm going to give a try on invading Romania. The sooner we get them, the better, I'd say. Right, so... We still have 60 days plus 2 months or so, so... Yeah, we have time. We can always just declare war on Spain anyway, they're fascist, no one will help them. So what you're going to do is grab 4 units to start in Constantinople and hit this tile here. You're going to grab another three for the other two tiles. At this point also I suggest hiring Father Demetrius and start upgrading Greece's intelligence agency so you can get cryptology. Yes we do lose a bit of political power but there's many ways for us to get more political power anyway and we're gaining quite a lot so it must be said. Right send all your army to Constantinople Put your navy on strike force in the Black Sea too. I'm going to try something different today. Normally I'd use this channel for the invasion of Romania too so he can get organiser. But in some ways it'd be better if our field marshal got it. So our field marshal is going to be our general for this invasion. It's a bit of a different strat but difference is nice. Now you should probably buy some materials from like Italy. Start breaking the UK cipher first and get the upgrades like Intersection Group and Machine Assisted Decryption. Right, it's time to go against Romania. This will be a bit of a harder one, but as long as Romania does what Romania does, we'll be okay. There you go, this tile will be defended. Try and grab this tile. There you go, that tile is empty. Summon the Greek part of your army. Start training up more divisions, by the way. 19 will do, good. Good. There you go, we've made it into the tile. Now make just a proper order like this. You want to defend until Romania's lost around 400,000 men. Right, there's the end of Romania. I let that go on too much. I even lost my justification on Spain, but oh well. Have a 65 day justification anyway. Grab a justification on Hungary, which is ready. So we're going to use it. Hungary should be very weak at this time anyway. And we're just waiting for our justification to get back. There we go. Put your units into position and go against Hungary. And put your main field marshal back. Good, he managed to get logistics wizard. Organizer, that's what you want. And look at that nine attack. That man breathes and people fall over. So, yes, I definitely recommend using your field marshal as a general to gain organizer. Right, most of Hungary is against Germany. Let's go get them. Oh, yes, don't forget to call it Romania. What am I saying? And that's the end of Hungary. Let's just pack at them. 
There we go. Right. We have a bit more of an army ready now, so what we're going to do is deploy five units to make this 19 a full army. There we go. And next we're going to get rid of all of Italy's reserve templates and put together a slightly better free army stack. There we go. A bit better. Not best, but better. Italy puts out so many of these units, man. There we go. Now the main 24, they're going to be sent to Sardinia. And send the fleet there too. With the reserve templates Italy's given you, you may as well put them on support for naval invasion. So put them like this, blah blah blah. There you go. Means in case the UK ever invades you, you'll be okay. So with the general, with the veterans, what we're going to do is hit the south of Spain from around Malaga to Murcia. They usually depend the north more. They go on one large invasion front. Right, units are fully orged. Time to declare war. Call in Italy so she uses her fleet to help you. It's annoying, but there you go. It works. Right, there's the end of Nash Spain, so let's get some puppets, shall we? Uh, let's puppet mm, Equatorial Guinea and the Arab Republic out of them. Can we puppet the other Spain out of them? No. Very well, we'll just puppet them then. <laughs> Perfect. What this now means is that we have easy access to Gibraltar and means we can smash into it and take it. Right. It's now May 1st, so it's time to get everyone together and plan for naval invasions. Right, we're going to put up a few more units, but until then, we have the main units to defend. We're going to put some units for Libya. We're going to have ones mostly for the UK. So, like, these ones will be on Akronia. These ones will be here. And these ones will be here. But for now, it's just trying to get out units by the dozen pretty much. Have a full army group ready pretty much. You have a few months before war. Make sure you get rid of Italy when you can. Release Italy as a puppet though so you still have them around. It means France has to garrison that border of theirs. Right, keep an eye on the Imro. You very likely might lose cause because of them. In a perfect world you might be able to leave the Axis before the Imro does it. But keep that in mind. So what we're going to do is also just shift around the production just a little bit. There you go. We do have a bit of an artillery problem. Annoying, but oh well. We're going to invade the UK pretty much now. As soon as we have a naval invasion ready. So what we're going to do is put two units into each port around Bristol and Cardiff. The strategy we've used many a time. I'm expecting due to the shenanigans we've been up to, the UK to be a bit more stifled a bit more rigid on its front they're more likely to have death stacked itself it's annoying but pretty much inevitable when raising world tension so much in fact belgium's in the allies by now but on the bright side this might mean they're more distracted we also have to take gibraltar so we don't get shut out of supply there believe me that's happened more than enough times right put the navy on strike force there and there, and accept Germany's call to arms. You got it all to do right now. You might want to take the Suez if you'd like. There you go. Call in Nationalist Spain so you can take. Oh, what am I saying? Before we call in Nationalist Spain, we should probably have a defense on the. the no, there, on the Pyrenees. Our units have left, that's good. Admittedly, I am behind on where I'd want to be just because I didn't bother to garrison that the uh, uh, Pyrenees properly. Make good use of force attack. Right, now that we're on the border, call in Nash Spain properly and take Gibraltar.
Right, there's the end. Right, we're going to puppet the United Kingdom and take things that we can eventually core. Go, yeah, that's very nice. Yeah, Britain uh, may as well give Nasha Spain some of its cores. Well, I say cores. It's just Gibraltar. Yes, yeah, take Tunis, Egypt, Cyprus, and many other things, and you'll get, be able to call them by Byzantium for matter. Right, that's the peace seal. And from what it seems like to me, I think I've got a Canada to take down. Don't know why that's my. Uh, yes, right, we're going to Canada. Only going to send two divisions worth because I cannot be bothered today. I'm going to send most of the army here. Start building your infrastructure up here so once the war the Soviet Union begins, we'll be fine. We're even doing stuff like coalesce governments and breaking ciphers now. There we go. Right, now we wait for Germany to go to war with the Soviet Union. Put everyone on the border and we just wait. No need to do anything silly. Don't get into a war with like the Chinese United Front or something, eh? I'm going to send all these reserve units to Hanoi. Also, since I've done it, Byzantium for Meta, we can finally do Triumph for the Levant and Triumph for Egypt and Tunis. Load more cores now. Very nice. If you're going to aim for a focus at this point, I'd say Land of Mountains it wouldn't be a bad idea. Normally, Germany won't break the pact for at least another year, so it's literally just a massive waiting game right now. Somehow, the Imre decisions for us didn't work. I'm guessing Germany refused the transfer or something? I don't know. But it's nice to not have my cores taken away unnecessarily. Oh, this is interesting. Look how it says, the modern Capitrax. So I've definitely not pronounced it right. It says, replace Hellenico with the Byzantine army. Well, that's interesting because I still have the Hellenic army and the Byzantine army. Does that mean I'm going to get the division recovery rate plus 20% just because it, these both happen? Come on, Germany, it's literally time. Purge is going to be gone. Yeah, the purge is gone. Germany's not declaring war on the so. I have two collabs in the Soviet Union, so they should fall a little sooner. Of course, going to war in such a late part of the year is definitely not going to be great. Well, that's a legacy of war, and yep, we have division recovery rate plus 20%, plus 8%, so 28% recovery rate. Pretty bloody good. <laughs> I think that's an oversight, because it's meant to be replaced by the Dantina army, not be alongside it. Nice one, Paradox. What is Germany's problem? Because of... Japan. Right, I've got justification on Town 2, whereas Town 2 was meant to be annexed, so this can only go badly. Get in here, Germany. Now, will Town 2 have called the Soviets in? Is the question. Yes, yes they do. Right, finally, let's do this. Got their cipher broken? Have two collabs on the Soviet Union. This is going to be fun. Your main strategy should just be in circle and destroy or just outright beat them.
Yes! And that's it. Soviet Union has capitulated. <laughs> that's good, that's good. You know, let's start off by giving Romania its cause back. They definitely deserve them. And let's take some stuff for ourselves, I think. Uh, I'm wanting the Caucasus. At least up to the former Fiodoro areas and the like. The bits that the Byzantines had some influence in. So, in this universe, the second Rome beat the third Rome. Quote, unquote, third Rome, I should say. <laughs> oh, let's bring back the Baltics. Why not? Let's satellite many a country. Right, now let's start giving the Soviets their cause back. If you want to do something like this, the thing you need to do is cut the Germans out from being able to take more. Because their AI is in disinclined to take more if you cut them out. There you go. Have a full line against them. Although they do lose Leningrad, but oh well. Now just continue up to the Arctic Circle and... Oh, no, we're out of points. Ah, oh, Germany's border gored us. And there you go. Treaty of Gorky. Bad romance. Germany has one of the weirdest exclaves I've ever seen. We have some new puppets now, all led by the same man. Uh, Romania got its stuff back. We got the Caucasus. We reclaimed Fyodoro. You know what? Let's do one other thing. Where's that button? Annexed. And now it's time to reunite the Roman Empire. It's time for a triumph for Italy. There you go. We now have cause in Italy too. <laughs> Let's put everyone back together and just send them all home. They deserve to go home at this point. Ugh. Or wherever their home might be. Might not be in the Byzantium Empire, but you know. It's their home now. <laughs> so we have cause all the way through here now. <laughs> you know, it's like Bordegor playing Greece's. Okay. Not the best though. I mean, this is Greece's path. Both democratic and fascist, there's nothing to do. I mean, when you look at Bulgaria's, look at that. And they came out in the same DLC. I'm going to out and say it, that Greece has the worst battle for the Bosphorus tree. You get pretty much nothing to do. You have no variation. I mean, it's alright, but like I said, democratic Greece only gets the Magali idea. Fascist Greece, oh, Byzantium, or the New World Order. There's nothing so much compared to... Turkey or Bulgaria, but oh well, what can you do sometimes? You're under the rule of Paradox Inc, aren't you? But yes, we finally did Bad Romance. Many of you have been asking for it for a very long time, so I thank you for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Leave any suggestions down below in the comments for future guides. Always looking for new video ideas. But until next time, everybody, this has been me, Bubble Zest, and goodbye. That should do it. Done. Bad romance. Ugh. Right, let's give Romania its stuff back because I'm feeling nice. Right. Now to do it for real and to go to bed because it is really late by the time I'm doing this. <laughs>